Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. With Jane, uh, my daughter, I talk about her a lot. Um, it's because I love her so deeply, my daughter Jane and my other daughter Marin. Um, they're some of, well, not some, they're like my best the thing I'm most proud of in my life is my two children, Jane and Marin. They're amazing, incredible kids. And I know for a lot of us, those of us who are parents, you probably have the same thoughts and same mindsets towards your kids. But one thing, and if you're a parent, you probably know this, teaching your kids the dangers of the road isn't easy. Like, I think the most dangerous place on the planet for a toddler is the Walmart parking lot. All right? I think it is. Because especially when you have two kids and you have one of you, right? It's like, okay, which... One of them can run away and one of them can just not move. So it's like, okay, let's deal with the one who can't move first. But what happens with Jane, and maybe you've seen this with your own kids, is, is when she doesn't always know if there's going to be a car coming in the, in the parking lot. She doesn't know. And so we're trying to teach her to, to wait and actually wait for traffic. So we're in, our, in our alley, we always say, Jane, before you cross it, you have to hold our hand and you have to look both ways seven times in my mind to make sure that it's safe to grow across. But what happens is she, I think she knows it, but as soon as she sees something that she wants, that idea goes out the window. It's like where we get to our garage and she sees her bike, she starts running through the alley. And I'm like, wait right like I'm like stop like like you gotta be careful you gotta you gotta wait for the traffic to go we have to we're trying to teach her to wait and it can be tough right to to, to teach her how to wait it's tough to teach our kids how to wait but I think for those of us you know as adults today too waiting as adults isn't always easy either waiting for the things that we've ordered online that don't come right away it's like ah when Amazon says two days shipping and it's two and a half days, whew, I'm going to have to send a return. Like we want things immediately. And we're trying to teach our children to wait because we want to protect them. We want to keep them safe because she doesn't fully understand the dangers of the road. And so the, the, the message I have uh, today is called, what are you waiting for? Now when our minds, this saying, what are you waiting for? And we hear this. It's oftentimes in the context of telling somebody to hurry up, right? Like, what are you waiting for? Come on, we got to go. We got to get to church. You know, my, I got my coffee ready, but we got to get to church. The kids aren't ready. And it's like, what are you waiting for? Let's go. We got to go. What are you waiting for? Maybe your boss is saying this as you're, as you're waiting for their approval for a decision. And they're just like, don't wait for me. Don't wait for my approval. Make the decision and go after it. However, this question today, what are you waiting for? How I want to ask this question is really in the literal way. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for God to do? You know, waiting is such an important part of following Jesus. The scriptures are filled with verses on waiting, verses that tell us to wait, verses that tell us to be patient, verses that tell us to stay calm, to breathe, to rest, to trust, filled with verses. Such an important part of following Jesus is this idea of waiting. Because when we give him our life, when we give Jesus our life, he becomes our leader and he becomes our Lord and we follow him where he goes and we rest when he rests and we wait when he waits. Waiting is so important for those of us who follow Jesus. However, it's also not an easy thing for us to do, to wait upon the Lord. We know the verses. You know, and of course our culture is in this place where if it's not immediate, it isn't good. If it's slow, it's not worth it. If I have to wait for it, I need to find a better product. I don't want to have to wait for stuff. I don't want to have to wait for my food in the drive-thru. I don't want to have to wait for my kids to get ready. I don't want to have to wait 45 minutes for my kid to put on one of her two shoes. I don't want to wait for, we want everything to happen immediately. And what happens is when it doesn't happen in our timing, when it doesn't happen in our control, it's very frustrating. 
When things don't happen when we want them to happen, it's so frustrating. You know, back in the day, when you take your cute fall family photos, you'd have to wait days before you could even see if grandpa's eyes were closed or not. Days. You'd have to send them in and wait. Days. Now it's like you get an immediate thing of like, yo, my kid's smile was not perfect in this photo. I'm not posting it. Let things happen so immediately. And that's what our culture strives for is this immediate response to what we need. But if we read through scripture, I think a lot of us realize that the things that even the promises God has called us to, the things he's called us to, it doesn't always happen immediately. It oftentimes takes time for us to actually step into the place where God has called us to go. And when we look at this question, what am I waiting for? I think some of us, we can't really answer this question because we don't actually know why we're waiting. We don't understand the why. God, why are you making me wait for the things you've given me? Why are you making me wait to get married? Why are you making me wait? I don't want to wait anymore. Some of us, we feel like we've been waiting our whole lives and we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And it can be really tough when we feel stuck in a place of waiting. Because we're stuck between what is and where we know we're supposed to be. But the process of waiting is so valuable. And today, my hope is to bring some clarity to this question. What am I waiting for? What are you waiting for? So why does God ask us to wait? And what benefits does this do for us? What does waiting do? And I have a few things I want to share today. Number one is what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a protection. You know, in our lives, again, we always want our timing to be right. We want God to move when we want him to. And if he doesn't move on my schedule, if he doesn't move when I want him to, if he doesn't move when I want him to, I'm going to do whatever I can to do it on my own. I don't want to wait, God. It's like, God, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for five minutes. I'm just going to make it happen on my own because I'm done waiting. I waited for 30 seconds and that's enough for me. I better go and I better do the things that I think I should do. But we don't often realize how much more important God's timing is than our own timing. See, when Jane is in the parking lots and I'm telling her to wait, it's not because I, I, I don't want her to have fun. It's not because I don't want her to enjoy the Walmart parking lot. The reason why is because I want to make sure she's safe. See, for her, the timing is I want to get it right now. I want to get to the store right now. I want to get to my snacks right now. I want to get it. I'm like, you got to wait in order to be safe. And when she comes and I walk beside her, she, I'm showing her and I'm teaching her that, that I will protect you. I will take care of you. I can make sure that this process, this transition, this walk we're taking is actually safe for you. But a lot of the time our conversations with God are, God, you're taking too long. You're too slow. Your plan was not good enough. Your plan will not work in this economy. Your plan will never work in this culture. You're, that plan, that thing you said, it's not going to work in my family. It's not going to work in my life. God, your plan isn't good enough for me. Now, I don't think we say those exact words, but I think internally sometimes that's how we feel. We think, my ways are better. My plans are, be are higher. God, I know you got some cool ideas, but I think I got some cool ideas too. I think I got some good ideas on what can happen. Next time, God, why don't you maybe do some research on what's going on in Canada before you tell me that plan. If I know what's happening in our governments. You know, in 2 Peter 3, 9 says this. It's so important and so powerful. The Lord isn't, really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he is patient for whose sake? For your sake, for my sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Whose sake is it that he's being patient for my sake and your sake? We're saying, God, you're being too slow. He's like, ah, if only you knew the outcome. If only you knew what's coming next. If only you knew what you're going through now that's going to prepare you for what's coming next. If only you knew your timing isn't actually always right, but his timing is. But I think it's so funny how oftentimes that things, they don't happen in our timing. It's his fault. If you remember when, 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 uh, when, when Jesus' friend Lazarus dies and they come and they're like, hey, he's dead. And they're like, why didn't you come sooner? Right, like why, like, like it took four days to come, why? 
Why did it take you four days to come? And so they start blaming Jesus, saying it's your fault he's not here. And we do the same thing in our life. When we don't get what we want, when we don't get the job that we applied for, when, when, when we have struggles in our marriages, when we have struggles with our kids, we, we say, God, it's your fault. We do this all the time. We say, God, I, I want what I want now. I don't want to wait for it. But I think that oftentimes, I think what God is saying to me, I think to you as well, is he's saying, if you got it now, you would crumble because your character isn't ready for the blessing. We always say, God, it's your fault. We don't look internally realize that if God gave us what we've been praying for, if God gave it to us now, it would, we would crumble because our character isn't actually big enough and strong enough to hold it up. Our character isn't, doesn't match the blessing. He's saying, you got to get ready in this waiting period. you got to prepare in this waiting period. I'm trying to protect you from what could be by telling you, get your character right now so that way you can actually hold the blessing I'm going to give you. So you can hold the mantles, you can hold the weight I'm about to give you. You have to be prepared. And that's why I think God says wait is for our protection. We're waiting and saying, God, okay, I trust you. I don't understand it all the time. I don't get why I'm waiting. But God, I trust you in this waiting process that you are doing this for my good. That you turn everything, you turn all things together for my good. He is being patient for my sake and your sake. He's waiting because he knows best and he knows better. And then number two, number one, uh, for protection, number two, for strength. We are promised his strength when we wait. Now there's this verse in Isaiah, and I'm sure you've heard this before. Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31 says this. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord... Other translations say those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. They will soar on wings like eagles and run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. You know, this is what I think the church in North America needs is this exact thing. I think so many of us, we're getting so tired. We're getting so exhausted. We're, we're tired of the weight we're carrying. We're exhausted by the stress we're exhausted by everything we're watching on the news and it's breaking our hearts and we're tired and we're weary it says wait upon the lord those who trust in the lord will find new strength and i think that's what we need that's what i need i need new strength i need new strength every day it says young men will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion and I think that's kind of the generations that we're looking at now. We're tired. We're weak. And we need to learn how to wait upon the Lord, to trust in the Lord. And the promise is we will receive new strength. Because the strength that you and I have is not sufficient enough. The strength that we, that we have is not sufficient enough to go day by day by day. We need him. We need to trust him. We need to learn to obey with the things he's asking us to do. We need to learn how to wait. But waiting is hard. We need to trust in the Lord, wait upon the Lord, and then we will find new strength. Not just some strength. Not the things that used to bring us strength. Not the energy drinks or the coffee. But new strength every day that's bigger and deeper and more powerful and stronger than we could ever imagine. When we actually wait upon the Lord, rest in his presence, get filled so that way we can go and pour out his love to those we see. It says we will soar on wings like eagles. Find rest as we get closer to him. Not our arms like we feel like in North America. We're like little hummingbirds whose wings are flapping um, like so, so, so fast. We, he says, no, we're going to become eagles and, and soar. Where we're still moving, but we're not tired. We're not weary. We, we have the strength we need to go day by day. We have the courage we need to go day by day to be restful and intentional with every flap that we have. And then number three, we're waiting for his fight. He says, he will fight for you. And we don't have to do anything but trust him and wait upon him. See, in Exodus 14, 
in Exodus 14, the Israelites are being chased. And this is what Moses says. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. That's a battle strategy. He's saying, I know the enemy's coming. I know we hear the footsteps. I know you can feel the earth shaking. I know you can see the dust in the distance. But what's our plan? Stand still. Don't move. Wait. And then he ends it with, just stay calm. You know, if we're in the same situation where we know that what's about to come towards us is going to be painful, what we, we see the earth shaking around us, we see the storms coming, we see it. And I think a lot of our response is to fight or just run away. We wanna, we're just gonna, okay, I'll go fight or I'm gonna run away. But a lot of us, we don't actually just sit there and, and just wait for God to do something. This is Moses' encouragement to the Israelites. Stand still and watch. Let's just see what happens. And I imagine they're, they're looking at him like, that's a horrible plan. Like, like, we should just go back, right? They say this over and over again. We should just go back. It's easier over there. The freedom, that we, it's going to be a lot of work to get this freedom. It's going to be a lot of work to get healing. It's going to be a lot of work. I see the enemy coming. We might as well just give ourselves back up. He's saying, no, just wait. And stay calm and watch what God's going to do. Cast all of our anxiety on him. How many of you know there's a lot to be anxious about? There is. If you turn on the news or you turn on the radio and go on Facebook, there's so many things to be anxious about. But I think we need to have a longer list of what we can be hopeful about what we can be excited about, what we can be energetic and passionate about. It says, cast all anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. He cares about you. He cares about what you go through. He cares about what's happening around our world with wars and terrorism. He cares. Cast it all on him. Yes, the enemy is coming. Yes, we might be able to see it and feel it coming. But sometimes the most powerful thing we can do is to stand still and wait. Give it all to him. All the things that we're going through to stand still. He's the one fighting. He's the one strategizing. Let him be God. You're not God. And I'm glad I'm not God. Because that's a lot of work. He's the one fighting. Let him be the Lord of your life. Let him lead you. Let him speak. This is some of the promises we have if we wait upon the Lord. But I want to kind of finish today where I want to talk about how do we wait? Because I think we read her like, I know how, like I know I'm supposed to, but what does that actually look like? What does it mean to wait upon the Lord? And there's so many, so much we can talk about in this, but I want to share a few thoughts that I have when it comes to how do we wait? Number one is we have to wait actively, not passively. A waiting can't be passive. We don't just sit around doing nothing. See, this is what David wrote in Psalm 5. Verse three, listen to my voice in the morning, God. Each morning I bring my request to you and what? Wait expectantly. He's not just waiting like angrily or sad, sadly, madly. I'm trying to think of other words, but those are the two I got, madly and sadly. I read a poem. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. In the waiting, we have to be expectant that God is going to do what he said he would do. You know, when you're expecting a child, things are pretty active. Especially like in the weeks leading up to birth. It's a pretty wild time because nobody knows what's happening, to be honest, in the sense of when it's going to happen. So your entire life is basically just waiting 
for this moment where you're going to welcome your child in. And it's a process. I've gone through it twice. It's a process both times. You know, you're, you're prepared to drop everything. Maybe, you know, as a husband, you know, I'll go to work and I'm ready to come home at a minute's notice, right? I'm ready. I got my go bag. She's got her go bag. We're ready to go. We had Jane even had a go bag. I'm telling you. Just in case. We're expecting this baby to come. And so our eyes and our, and our, and our minds are on what we're expecting. And even before the nine months before the baby's born, and you see this, and it's funny because we all, I mean, most of us have done this. You have a baby, you spend nine months preparing a room they're not going to sleep in for like six to months to five years. You see this, right? They're like, look, the room is perfect. I spent thousands of dollars on this room and the crib is like high end and perfect. They don't, sometimes they don't even sleep in it one time. You try to have a nap once, it did not go well. Now it's like, oh, you're in my bed now, you know? Or you get the toys and you get everything prepared. You're preparing nine months to prepare for the birth of this child. And for a lot of us, it's the same thing. If we want to see the birth of our dreams or the God things God has placed inside of us, we have to spend the time preparing for what's about to come. We can't just be sitting back and waiting and being like so passive about it. We got to be, we got to be actively waiting. Waiting doesn't mean just, just literally doing nothing. It means we have to be preparing, and the pre preparation might not even be hard work. It might be like, David, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning, I bring my request to you. When was the last time you woke up and made your request known to God in the morning? When was the last time you woke up, and rather than check your phone, you checked in with God? When was the last time? Some of us were like, we're, we're, we're not even waiting anymore. We're just like, God, ah, I got it. I got it here on earth. We're good. Each morning, I bring my request to you and I wait expectantly for you to do something about what I'm praying about. This is the power of prayer in our life. We don't just sit passively waiting. It has to be active, expectant, not filled with doubt or disinterest but fully surrender to the will and call of the one who created us. It can't come from a heart of giving up. It has to be from a heart of hope. Psalm 20, uh, 62 verse 5. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. God is our hope. He's the one fighting the battle, doing things behind the scenes that we don't even see yet or we don't even feel yet. We sing about it. Even if I don't see it, even if I don't feel it, he's still working. And our hope is in him. We see the chaos in our world and we keep, keep our eyes on him and we expect him to do something. We know him and we trust him. Our hope is in him. That even if our world is crumbling, we can still have faith. We can still stand, we can still wait, and we can still trust. And then number two, how do we wait? Don't hide, but seek. Kids like to play this game. Jane likes to play with me all the time. She's not a very good hider, and I'm a really good seeker. Like, really good. In fact, sometimes I have to pretend I haven't found her yet. Because I'm so good at finding her because she's standing behind our curtain. I'm like, yeah, I see you, though. Like, through it. It's like, it's not even like a thick curtain. One time I was, we were playing hide and seek and I, I literally hid on our couch under the blanket and she had no idea where I was. Like literally I'm sitting there in the blanket. It's pretty obvious there's a body in there. Didn't see me, Beth had to show her where I was. But when it comes to waiting, we have to not hide, but we have to seek him. When we're waiting, we're not hiding, we are seeking. We aren't hiding from the realities in front of us. We're not afraid, we're not hiding from the battle that's gonna come. We're actually seeking him to bring him into the battle, bring him into the situation, bring him into the circumstance that's right in front of us. Rather than running away, we bring him into it by seeking him while we wait. You know, what are we search, seeking, seeking? What are we searching for? We're see, searching for more of him, more intimacy, more dependence, more surrender, more of him. See, Lamentations 3.25 says this, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. The soul who seeks him. And the context of a lot of these verses 
is a very challenging time for the people who these were written to. Times where they didn't know what was gonna happen in their lives, where they've been under captivity for a long time and they've been struggling and they're, they're, they're trying to make, find a way, they're trying to figure it out. Some of them have been waiting for years and years and years, decades, waiting, generations waiting. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Let us learn to wait for him, to turn off our phones and get into the quiet and listen. Listen to the still, small voice that speaks life and speaks encouragement. And how do we do this? We spend time with him. We spend time praying and reading and meditating and journaling and listening and pursuing and worshiping. If the only time we worship is on a Sunday, it's gonna be really tough to have deep connection. If the only time we pray is before we eat our McDonald's. So you can bless that food. It's still probably not gonna be good for your tummy. I love it. If that's the only time we're praying, We have to stop hiding from our problems. Stop hiding from our addictions and bring him into them. Rather than on our own strength searching for what we can do, let's just be searching for more of Jesus. Some of us are getting so tired because we're so bound up in all of the things and we're struggling and struggling to get out. Just be still. And know. Right, so it says, be still and know that I'm God. When we're still, when we're waiting, what do we do? We seek him and know that he is God. And then the last thing that I think when it comes to waiting, I think is really important and it's kind of different, but number three is it's not about getting even. You know, our culture loves to get even, right? We love retaliation. We love revenge. You know, you do something to me, you better expect me to do something to you. Expect to be hurt by me as well. It's payback season. You're gonna get it from me. You're gonna get the earful over the phone. You cut me off in traffic, well, I'm gonna show you a gesture with my hand that you're not gonna like. I heard a story once of a worship leader he was a guest worship leader at a conference, I think, or an event, like a concert. And he was running late, and he's trying to get in traffic, and some guy cut him off, and he, you know, gave him one. Guy turns into the same church parking lot as him, and now he's leading worship in front of this guy. <laughs> and we think, like, <laughs> this is what our culture wants us to do is get even. I'm going to show you. We like to take the wrath of God into our own hands, right? We do. That's what Proverbs says. Proverbs 20, verse 22, I love this. Don't say I will get even for this wrong. Wait for the Lord to handle the matter. <laughs> you know? Do you trust God enough to let him handle the matter? Do you trust him enough? Do you know what's hard is this? I read this verse, I was like, I want to handle it. You know, like kind of, like there's a part of me, it's like, I want to do it. I want to handle the matter. But I imagine, I mean, my kids are still pretty young, but I imagine if there's in school and some kid's trying to bully my kid, it's like, you know, you know, the school might handle the matter, but I kind of want to handle it too, you know? Do you trust God enough to handle it? To say, I won't retaliate. I won't seek revenge. I won't try and get even. I will trust God and leave it in his hands. That's hard. I will wait. I will listen. I will listen to him before I act. And I will hear before I respond. You ever met somebody? And we all do this. Like I met somebody. You met me once. Who they have a better job time responding than listening. Ever, you ever been around somebody like that? It's tough. You're trying to share something and they're like cutting you off all the time. You're like, and then you start doing it, right? 
and it's like, in those conversations, especially when there's like two of us who are that way, it gets really loud really quick. Because I'm going to try and speak louder, you know, more aggressively than you. But are we at a point in our relationship with Jesus where we can say, I won't retaliate. I won't seek revenge. I won't try and get even. I will trust you to handle it and to handle my heart. Do you trust God to handle your heart that sometimes is so filled with anger that we can't wait? Right? We're like a tea kettle. It starts boiling. We're like... Let's out, we, let, we let out a loud whistle. You know. That's how it is for so many of us. We love to let God sometimes handle what's going on in other people's lives, but we don't let him step foot in our heart. Bring healing to me and learn, teach me how to forgive and teach me. And a lot of this comes through really this word waiting. What are you waiting for? I think for a lot of us, we're waiting for different things. But the question is, what are you waiting for? Do you know why God is asking you to wait in this season for whatever it is? Do you know why? It might be for your protection. It might be because if he gave you the blessing now, your character couldn't hold it. So you're not ready. You're actually not ready for, for what he's promised you yet. You got to work on your character first. You know, maybe... Maybe you're, you're, you're waiting for him, for his strength. I don't know, there may be some of us who every day it's a struggle even to get out of our bed. It's a struggle for us to get up and go to work or we're tired. And we, like, God, there's got to be more. We need his strength to keep going, to keep fighting, to keep on going. And how do we get that strength? By waiting. And it's funny because if I told that to a bodybuilder, like, you, you, sometimes, yeah, you got to have some rest in between, but you got to be working hard. If we want to get stronger spiritually, that comes through waiting and resting in solitude, not isolation, but solitude in the presence of Jesus. You know, you might be waiting for his fight where you know that what's coming is going to be hard. You can see it. You're starting to feel the, the you start to feel it coming. You're waiting for him. It might be just like Moses said in Exodus. Don't be afraid. I feel like God might be speaking this to someone today. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. In chaos, you have the ability to stay calm. You know, for a lot of us, I think it's real tough to stay calm when chaos is there. Waiting is hard. I know this is true because I've ordered something online before. In fact... I remember when I got this here laptop, I ordered it, and I got the confirmation code and the tracking information, and tracking information is dangerous. I love it, but I also don't like tracking info at all. The reason I say this is because I'll check the tracking information every 15 minutes. Now, I don't know what you do, but that's just literally like for me, and it's like a problem. You know, but I was excited because someone, they had known my laptop was horrible. I'm telling you, barely worked. I'm surprised it lasted this long. So someone saw that and they're like, hey, we want to buy you a new laptop. So I got, the, I ordered this new laptop. I was so excited. And literally I get the information. Literally five minutes later I check it. I'm like, I better call Apple. It's not processed yet. This is a problem for me. And then the day it says it's going to arrive by 8 p.m. Guess what didn't happen that day? It didn't arrive. I was like, what has the world come to? I kept checking and checking. Finally, it came. Waiting isn't easy. And it, I'm, like, I'm talking waiting for a laptop. 
Some of us are waiting for the healing or waiting for the miracle or waiting for breakthrough or waiting. And we feel like we've been waiting year after year. I want to encourage you in the waiting, grow your character. In the waiting, don't hide from the problems. That's not waiting. It's not hiding. It's seeking Jesus to bring him into it. Seeking wisdom, seeking counsel. To seek him first. We have to learn to wait upon the Lord and let him renew our strength. To fight. To fight for us. To protect us from our own timing. And find the victory in his timing. You know, our takeaway today is this. Waiting isn't about hiding, it's about seeking. In the waiting, it's not running away, it's seeking Him through prayer, through journaling, through scripture, to wait and get closer to Him. Seek first his kingdom, and then all will be added. Seek him first. To fight for us. You know, and as I was thinking about this week, to be honest, this week, I was really struggling with what I, what, what I wanted to speak about. Usually I have like months in advance pl- plan of what I feel God is speaking and what I'm supposed to speak. And I, didn't, I, I had nothing, like I'm telling you. I was like, and this whole week I was literally waiting for God to speak something. And I was like, God, like, it's already, it's already Wednesday, man. And I didn't hear a thing. So what happened is I, I was like, okay, what could I speak about? You know, I started having all these things. Literally nothing. And then God, uh, you know, this week kind of slowly going to reveal this to me. And I really feel that for us as a church and for you, this might be a thing that a lot of us, maybe we are struggling with is when it comes to actually waiting. We don't know what we're waiting for. We're tired of waiting. We're sick of it. I'm waiting a long time. I want to encourage you. Wait upon the Lord. You got it. And maybe you need to start bringing in some new disciplines in your life to draw closer to Him. Some new disciplines of prayer and reading the scriptures and worship. You know, rather than listening to Ed Sheeran on your way to work, you could listen to worship music. <laughs> You know, let's, let's uh, you know, all of us, and this is me, I need to stop getting so distracted while I'm waiting. God's like, wait, and I'm like, I got you. And then one eye's open, I'm peeking around, I get distracted, and I pursue the wrong things, and I, waiting isn't about hiding, it's about seeking, let's seek him first. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for all of those in here today or those who are watching online who, This is where they're at, Father. They're feeling so tired, feeling weary. God, I pray that you rise them up on wings like eagles. God, I pray that you renew their strength in a deep and profound way. Those who are dealing with things that have happened over the past couple of years within their families, and it's been heartbreaking. God, I pray that you bring rest to their soul. You bring, you bring peace to the grief. You bring life and love to the darkest parts. God, I pray that you will give us the courage, you'll give us the strength to not hide, but to seek you. To seek you for our families and to seek you for our businesses and seek you for our church. Seek you first, Father because you are so good, so loving, and you care. Help us cast our anxiety to you on you today, because you can carry it better than I can. And God, we lift up our brothers and sisters right now in, in the Middle East, in Israel, in that whole region. I think sometimes, at least for me and God, I think sometimes it's, I don't even know what to pray. 
But God, we pray that you will be a light in the darkest place. Your love will reign in that area. Bring your life, bring your love, bring your joy and peace to the hearts of those who need it. God, we thank you, we love you. And God, help us learn how to wait better and be more patient. In Jesus' name, amen.